New technologies for helping food producers to develop better strategies for managing their environmental footprint are emerging all the time. But before these tools reach the market, there's a significant amount of research and funding support that underpins them. One such tool is in the early stages of development at the University of Canterbury. My understanding is that due to the intensification of dairying, um, you get increased runoff of waste from, that are produced by cows and that leads to an increase in nitrate levels and I believe that around Canterbury those nitrate levels are starting to reach the trigger levels for becoming a human health hazard. Because those nitrate levels keep on creeping up, we need to start worrying about whether we need to be doing something about it and of course the more you know, the more power you have, the more you can actually manage your farming practices so that you mitigate your environmental damage before it becomes a problem. What happened is that Sally came to me with this problem. She's an environmental chemist so she's interested in understanding what's happening with chemicals in the environment and she came to me with this problem. She said look this is going to be an increasing problem, nitrates in the environment and I said well okay um, I understand how molecules work so how about we work together, you do the whole outward facing understanding what the problem is and I'll do the inward facing working out a way to understand how we detect what the problem is and measure the levels of nitrate. So it's kind of a, I do the fundamental science half and we work together to then translate that into a real world environment. The best current method is a cadmium reduction method whereby you put cadmium into a solution and the cadmium binds to the nitrate and that changes the colour of the, the cadmium itself so you get this beautiful colour change but unfortunately cadmium is really toxic. And yeah, you're only using it in small quantities because it's a monitoring thing, not actually releasing it into the environment. But still, you'd really like a method that you can deploy without any toxic wastes. There are, and there are a bunch of other methods, but they all kind of have this got like one little snag, like the cadmium method. And so we thought, well, maybe if you don't put something into the solution, but maybe if you take something out of the solution, so just turning the problem on its head could be the key to getting a better way of detecting nitrates. Do you want to be the light guy or the gas guy? Light guy. All right, you can be the light guy. <laughs> Plug it in. So what our sensor is going to do is it's going to suck up a sample of water that contains nitrates and then it's going to do some processes and convert that into a reading that tells us about how much nitrate is in that water. But this should be able to be done in real time. So within a couple of seconds of sucking up a water sample or indeed um, drilling up a core soil sample, you should be able to detect how much nitrate is in that water. You can't just pull nitrate out. It's not like a bead or something or a rock that you can pull out of the water. It's a chemical compound that's just mixed in. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a photochemical transformation, which just means we shine some light at it and turn it into something else that's a gas. And that gas stream is going to get carried off. And then when that's carried off, we're going to then take that gas and we're going to use some methods to detect it. So there are two key steps, producing the thing we're going to detect and then detecting it. So you need a light source to irradiate your sample, to shine on your sample effectively so you can produce your gas. And then, and that could be a laser or it might be a LED or it might be a conventional lamp. And then you need a detector, detector technology. And so that could be a infrared spectrometer or it could be a mass spectrometer or it could be uh, something simple like a conduct conductivity meter. So um, there are a bunch of different possible technologies and the science challenge is to pull those together into a real working device and that's what we're really excited about getting our teeth into. There are some methods that can do the job about as quickly but they're not portable and they're not reusable. So as always there are some things that can do part of the job but there's nothing that does the whole job and there's nothing that's cheap and effective and fast and can be remotely deployed and reused and is not toxic. So we're trying to tick all of those boxes all in one device. One of the things that we could imagine is you get a device and you mount it on a drone and you actually fly your drone around your farm and sample locations but you could also set up a network of these things because they should be relatively cheap and low cost and robust so you could actually just mount them and get continuous real-time data. Ideally this technology will be robust enough that 
anyone can pick it up and use it. So it could be if you're a farmer and you're interested in knowing more about what's happening on your farm, but if you're in a regional council and you're interested in environmental monitoring, or even if you're in a research lab and you're interested in solving these kind of research questions about what goes where and how do we understand what goes where, I'd like to see this being used on all of those levels. Tech Jump Start is a University of Canterbury initiative that is backed by KiwiNet. It's hard to get money to get science done. And so Tech Jump Start is really looking to form a bridge between people who want to do the science, want to kind of answer these questions of how do we put it all together and make a working device, and people who want a problem solved. And that has actually traditionally been quite a big gap. If I didn't have the Tech Jump Start funding, I wouldn't be here talking to you. We wouldn't have the money to employ someone to get started on this project. It would just be an idea that was sitting in my filing cabinet. So I'm going to have an intern who is going to be tasked with taking the basic scientific principles and then developing every component in the device to function as well as possible so that we actually can detect environmentally relevant levels of nitrate. We are talking to commercial partners in conjunction with Astrolab Limited and the university's research and innovation office and ultimately what we all want to get out of this is an actual product that actually works and I get to do some interesting science. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.